So here is a simple graph. First algorithm we're going to describe for storing the graph in our code is called a dual list approach. So let me write that down for you. We're gonna keep one list, which contains the names of our vertices, and we're gonna keep another list that contains a list of all of our edges. So here, for example, we've labeled the vertices with single capital letters, but they don't have to be single capital letters. They could be larger strings like New York and Chicago. They could be. But here we've just simplified them to single letters. And here we have a list of all the edges that are in this graph. Now, this graph is undirected. That means that if I have an edge from A to B, then I also have an edge from B to A. Notice that if I store one of those edges here, I don't store the other edge because that would just take up unnecessary amount of memory. There's no point in it. I know that the graph is undirected and simple. So I just put it in one way and don't worry about the uh, mirror image of that edge. So now, what are we gonna use this list for and what are we gonna use this list for? We're gonna talk about that a little bit and we're gonna talk about how efficient it is in memory and how efficient it is in terms of time for those two operations that I discussed earlier. How quickly can we tell how many edges or what edges are connected to a particular vertex? And how quickly can we tell if two vertices are connected to each other with an edge? What do you notice that's different about this graph versus the last one? Ms. Mila? It's weighted. It's weighted. That means that the edges have some weight or some cost associated with them. Most of the time, the weights tend to be positive. What does it mean if a weight is negative? Think about that in a real world application. It's consider that's a very good uh, description. So the student said you gain something along the way. Often, if you have like a coupon or something like that, you can have negative weights. We're not gonna deal with negative weights in this class, but I just want you to know that for certain applications, it is possible. Now, if you look at this particular graph, you'll see that some of the vertices take up more room than others. For example, Denver takes less room to store than San Francisco because it's got fewer letters. But we're not gonna deal with that. We're just going to assume that the names are gonna be of some fixed length, some maximum number of characters, and we'll assume that all the vertices have that maximum property. Let's go back to here for a second. Uh, notice that when I have a weighted graph, What's changed in the representation of the graph in my dual edge design? The edge list now has three components to it. It has the two endpoints of the edge and it also has the weight of the edge. Okay, let's come down here now and look at this one. This is an alternate way of storing information in a, list, in a dual list method. What's different about this implementation? So what do you think that zero and one refer to here? Sir, is what do these numbers represent here? So this represents the indices of the vertexes. So if we were to use this type of representation, what's going to happen now is when the user refers to vertex H, we're going to look up in here and try to determine what is the index of vertex H. And that'll be a seven. And then later on when we're dealing with vertex H, instead of dealing with the letter H, we're gonna deal with the number seven. And my question to you is, do you think that this is a better internal representation of the graph? Or do you think that this is a better internal representation and why? The indexes are a better way to go, sir. And can you give me a couple of sentences on as to why that should be? I think you will find that in general, people like letters and words and names and computers are better with numbers. We'll be able to use the numbers as indexes into an array. It's just much easier to manipulate the numbers. So in this design, we're going to, instead of referring to the vertices by name, we're gonna check the indexes of the vertices and use those throughout the rest of our design. Now I mentioned to you that there are two questions that we frequently ask about graphs, and we wanna talk a little bit about that right now. If I wanted to find out all the vertices that were connected to vertex D, I have to do two steps. First, I need to know the index of D. And so I could look that up here. 
One way I could look it up is to go through this array one at a time until I found vertex D, and then I could see what its index was. What would be a much faster way of storing this information so that I could look up a number associated with the letter quickly? Mr. F, sorry, sir. What would you do if you needed to have some sort of data structure where I could give it a letter like C and tell it that the number for that is two. And so that would be a perfect example of how you could use a map. Would we use a hash map or a tree map here? We don't care about the ordering, so we would want to use a hash map here. So now the question becomes, we want to find out all the nodes that are connected to node D. So if we were to use some sort of hashing scheme here, what would be the big O of converting from the name D to the letter three? What would be the big O of that operation? It's O of K. So here, the part where we look up the name and tra translate it into a number, that would be O of K. Now the next thing we have to do to figure out what nodes are connected to D is what? So I search this list and every time three comes up in either of the first two columns, I got to make note of the fact that there's another edge there that's connected to three. So in terms of big O, how long is that going to take me? O of E. And what did we say was the worst case scenario for E? N square or V square. So basically, we're looking at a situation like that. And I think you will agree with me that if I combine these two, what will be the final big O? So it would just be this part right here. And so the operation, the speed of that operation would be O of V square. And now we need to ask the question, is that good? Is that bad? Good or bad? Mr. Frenovic, good or bad, sir? It's bad. It's bad. It's bad. We shouldn't have to. When we look up and search for information, it shouldn't be in the order of V square. We want it to be order of what? We want it, the best we're gonna get is probably order of V. I'll show you that in a minute. Okay, but V square is, it, that's not good. So we have to keep this in mind. Now let's look at the memory usage here. What is gonna be the cost for memory here and what's gonna be the cost for memory here? Now, so far in this course, all the big O analysis we've done have been time analysis. I think this might be the first time where we're using the same big O technique to analyze memory usage. What's gonna be the big O memory usage here and what's gonna be the big O memory usage there? It's basically related to the number of edges that are gonna be in this graph because if we have to search the edges as the number of edges grows, our time complexity is going to increase. So getting back to my other question about memory, how much memory for this and how much memory for this? So let's look at that together here and what's going to be here. Let's look at this one. How much big O here, sir? Go ahead. O of N. It's going to be O of N or O of V. So uh, you could write it like this or you could use the little V, right? And then how much memory is going to be for this part here? Yes, sir? V squared. This is going to be O of V squared, or we could also write it as O of E, like that. So you can see here that the memory is going to be the larger of these two things. And what I want to know is, is this good or is it bad? It's as good as it can get. So really efficient memory-wise, not good on time.